Welcome. My name is Dick Allendorf. I'm a SCORE counselor out of the Minneapolis office, and I'll be your narrator today. My background includes uh, 11 years as Senior Vice President of Leasing for a major local developer in the Twin Cities area. Eight years as Senior Vice President uh, of Commercial Brokerage for a national brokerage firm. And for the last 13 years, I've had my own uh, commercial real estate company, Allendorf Commercial Real Estate, Inc. Okay, so what are we going to learn today? What we're going to learn is some of the issues concerning a lease, what a lease is, what are the common terms that you're going to run into in a lease, and although everything is negotiable in a lease, what terms should you negotiate for your best economic advantage? Now, let's think about the leasing types out there. Most of uh, the people whom I counsel are either looking for a retail or an office lease. Retail leasing uh, is usually the most expensive type of lease for the tenant, unless you're getting into a high-rise office building, and that's really because the landlord has picked that area because of traffic, also because uh, the landlord normally wants tenants in there who will get some synergy from each other, and they want your signage to be visible. Uh, office leasing is the next expensive in this time of uh, high unemployment. Office leasing really isn't doing very well, but I'm sure that will come back with the employment picture. And industrial leasing normally is the least expensive for a tenant. Now, I get some uh, people who are going to be manufacturers, reps, or want to be as a counsel, and they also look at a type of lease called a flex space lease. A flex space lease is really for a building that looks a little bit like an office building from the outside but has some industrial space in it so that as a manufacturer's rep, you can go ahead and uh, inventory some of your goods right where you uh, have your office. Now, how do we begin here? We start by uh, saying what sort of location are you interested in and what is the market in that location? I always tell people that uh, one of the best ways to start is to find a good commercial broker who knows the area that you're looking at. Now, you should know that commercial brokers aren't going to cost you anything. The landlord really has uh, a bucket, if you will, of expense in their lease amount for a commercial broker. Uh, as well, the broker, unlike a residential broker, only gets paid if, in fact, the lease goes ahead. So you really should not worry about uh, having to pay a commercial broker because that's not the way they work. Of course, you can always uh, research the area yourself, and uh, although I wouldn't advise it, you could advertise for a certain area of a certain size. Now, we're going to uh, cover a lot uh, in this session, but again, I can't cover everything in a webinar, so you should feel free if you get a lease to ask your broker for help. What's common in the marketplace? Retain an attorney. Uh, a lease is a legal document. You can bet that the landlord has an attorney who made up the lease for them, so you should look upon it as a legal document and uh, do not be shy about getting a, an attorney involved. And by all means, read that lease before you sign it. There are so many people who say, well, it's a standard or boilerplate lease. That's really not the case. You should read the lease, know what you're getting into. Now, what is a lease? 
a lease is a binding contract, and it's not dissimilar from a bank loan. And I say that because if you take out a bank loan, you're expected to pay it back. You're going to be paying it back over the term of the lease. And if you don't pay it back, you can expect that the bank will come at you and uh, want that payment, sometimes in a lump sum if you get behind. That's exactly what a landlord will do with the lease that you're getting into. So remember, it is a binding contract. It also is usually the second highest expense item for the business person. The first, of course, is personnel cost. And remember, in your pro forma, in your business plan, to put in a cost for yourself, even though you may not pay yourself, but put in that cost. Personnel cost is going to be the most expensive uh, item in your business plan, but the lease will probably be the second most expensive. A good lease is a lease where the commitment of the landlord and the tenant meets their objectives. So what do I mean by objectives? Well, as a tenant, you want to term of that lease to fit with your business plan. If you can only see three years out, have your ter the term of your lease, a three-year lease. If you can see five years out and feel comfortable, that's what you should do. I normally tell people that uh, they should not go beyond three or five years because you can always ask the landlord for an option to stay in that space if, in fact, you're the same size as the space is after the three and five years, uh, and that location meets your desire. You also want to pay as little as possible, and that may be uh, self-evident, but if the uh, rental rate is below the market, and remember you've asked your broker what the market rate is, be a bit wary of that space. Is there a reason why it's below the market? Is that reason consistent with the reason you want to go into that building? Now, from the landlord's standpoint, they really want a tenant who's going to pay the rent. And when paying the rent is most important to the landlord, he's going to bring up things like a credit check, What's your credit like? Have you walked out on any other leases in the past? He's also probably going to want a security deposit. Now, the security deposit is something that you should get back at the end of your lease, but that security deposit does two things. First of all, it protects the landlord from you not paying the rent. But secondly, uh, it also protects the landlord if the space uh, when the lease is up, is in a condition that is less than normal wear and tear. And, of course, that landlord wants a fair return, and that's why good landlords know the markets and charge what the market uh, will bear and not more and certainly not less. So what we say is the best lease is a lease where both parties' objectives are met. Now let's go into the, common, the most common terms that you're going to run into in a lease. And the first one is, what's the size of that space? Is the size enough so that you can move in and feel comfortable in a three-year term? Is the size really what it is purported to be? And I mean by that, uh, you are going to be charged rent by the square foot, which we'll get into in a minute. You don't want to pay rent on 1,500 square feet if that space is only 1,200 square feet. So you have every right to ask for your space to be measured. And also, uh, premises clauses, especially in large retail areas, sometimes has what's called a move 
you want to avoid that move clause because you've cho chosen the retail space because it is something that you think is visible. Uh, it may have the traffic flow that you're looking for, and you don't want to allow the uh, landlord to come along and say, okay, we've got someone else for this space. We're going to move you to the back of uh, the retail area or someplace that you haven't bargained to be. So when you see a uh, move clause in the premises section, avoid that if you can. A good way to start to... Uh, uh, negotiations is to have a letter of intent. Now, the letter of intent is not binding. Uh, it says right in the letter of intent, usually at the beginning and at the end, that you can only be bound by a lease. But it is good to have a letter of intent between the tenant and the landlord, so the major items like rent, tenant improvements, move-in date, are covered, everyone understands it, there's no verbal misunderstanding when you get to the uh, lease itself. And we talked a little bit about term. Uh, I would try to avoid a month-to-month -month lease if I were giving advice to you on a lease. I'd want a term, usually three to five years, but sometimes you can get a one-year lease if you have an option to renew, and options to renew are always to the tenant's benefit. I say that so that you can understand that if you have an option to renew and the uh, market goes way up or way down, you can always say to the landlord, look, the market has changed. Uh, this option to renew at a certain dollar amount is no longer valid, can you change it? On the other hand, the landlord uh, will not be able to change the option if the option is the tenant's option. Okay, let's go over a couple other uh, terms here. One is commencement date. You should negotiate a lease which commences when you are ready to do business. What I mean by that is if you need to get permits for your space, if you need to build the space out in some manner, you should not have the rent part of your lease commence until you are ready to open the door for clients. Leave that time to get permits and complete the improvements uh, on your landlord's dime, if you will. Next, you're going to come into a, a use clause, and again, what I recommend to people is be as expansive as you can be in your use clause. Uh, if you are thinking about doing something, uh, some facet of your business, don't just put in the lease what you're thinking about today, but maybe what you're thinking about tomorrow and the next day, because the landlord will probably hold you to that use clause uh, use. Also, include exclusions in your use clause. For example, if you're uh, thinking about opening a sub shop, uh, deli shop, you want to uh, say to the landlord, I don't want uh, Jimmy John's coming in and competing with me in this retail center. I wanted you to exclude other sub shops in your use clause. And finally, uh, operating hours is something that people gloss over. However, the landlord may want you to have certain operating hours that you don't want to have or are not part of your business plan. In large retail centers, for example, the landlord wants everyone to be open from 8 to 10, and sometimes on Saturdays. Well, if those aren't hours that give you revenue, uh, you should avoid those operating hours. Put in the operating hours that you feel comfortable with and not just uh, what the landlord wants you to uh, 
to be uh, in operation. Now, I told you at the beginning, everything's negotiable, but really the uh, three areas of your uh, lease that are the most negotiable and you should really pay attention to the closest are rent, tenant improvements, and any clauses that protect you. First of all, rent. Rent is stated uh, in commercial terms on a dollar per square foot per year basis. That may seem a bit cumbersome, but it, uh, what it does is it allows you to compare the cost of competing suites, no matter what their size might be. If rent were just quoted on a uh, monthly basis, uh, you may get a smaller space for $1,000 a month, or a larger space could be much more effective at $1,000 a month. So rent is really quoted on a dollar per square foot per year basis. There are two types of rents in our commercial marketplace. A gross rent is that amount that is fixed for a term. It includes everything. We'll get into that in a minute, but that gross rent is what I would look for if I could possibly enter into my best lease. A net rent is exactly that. The rent is net to the landlord, and you as a tenant are going to pay all operating expenses, all taxes, all of the costs associated with the center that you're in. The tenant improvement area, it's uh, rare for us to come into a space and say, wow, this space meets our exact needs. We don't have to make any changes to the space. We normally do. And or there are points of uh, tenant improvements that you will want to uh, look at and change, and we'll get into how to do that. And then protection clauses, again, those protect you much like I was talking about the move clause. You don't want to be uh, interfered with in your space. Okay, I said rent was normally expressed as dollar per square foot of space on an annual basis. That means that a quoted rent of $18, for example, for a 1,000 square feet, means you've got $18,000 of obligation for the year or 1500 per month. You should know that that is the case so that you can compare different spaces. A gross rent, the one that I would like to uh, get if I'm looking at a space, really means that everything is included in that $18 example I gave you. Nothing is over and above for taxes, insurance, maintenance, utilities outside of the space, and any janitorial and security. You, of course, should expect to pay for your own utilities within the space, and that's only fair because you might use more electricity or water or gas uh, than your neighbor does, and uh, you shouldn't make the landlord pay for that. But more and more common in most marketplaces is a net rent. And that means that the landlord wants their rent net of any other cost. All of those costs that I mentioned, the taxes, insurance, utilities, are costs that you are going to have to bear. So when you go into a net rent situation, look at the net rent, but also look at what the common area maintenance, that's the term used for all of those outside expenses, Look at what those are compared to the alternatives that you have in the marketplace. Because if you pay your $18 net and the space you're looking at has $10 of common area maintenance and a competing space has $5 of common area maintenance, 
uh, you've got quite a difference there that you have to weigh. By the way, you uh, part of the breakdown for uh, common area maintenance is going to be a landlord uh, management fee. Some people don't understand that, and they just let that one go. A, a management fee should never be more than 5% of the uh, gross rent. If it is, you may just have the wrong space in mind. Now let's go to tenant improvements. That's the cost to change your space. Uh, and as I said, very rarely is the space just the way you want it when you uh, move in. Now there are different ways to pay for that cost. Uh, you can pay for them yourself. That's certainly what the landlord would like. Uh, you can have the landlord pay for them. That's certainly what you would like. Uh, or you could have the landlord loan you the cost. That's called amortization and add it to your net rent. Uh, let me just mention a couple of things there. First of all, you should never have to pay for new carpet, new paint, and repairing the space in your, uh, uh, of the space, excuse me. The landlord should always pay for that. Uh, you also should know that if you have the landlord loan you the money to pay for the tenant improvements, he's going to charge a higher interest rate for you in that amortized amount than you could probably go to a bank get uh, as far as an interest rate is concerned. So uh, if you are going to, if there's some expenses which the landlord isn't going to cover directly, I always counsel people to go to the bank to cover those spaces rather than going to the uh, uh, landlord and asking him or her to cover those spaces. Now we're going to end uh, our negotiating portion of, uh, of this webinar by looking at a couple of protection clauses for you. One is a sublease or an assignment clause. The sublease or assignment is to your benefit, and uh, you should always get that included in your lease. And what that says is, gee, if something has gone wrong with my business, if I can't stay here in business, I may be able to find someone else who will take over this lease, and I will sublease to them. So that person or entity would be paying the rent, and I don't have to pay the rent. Another term that I just mentioned, similar to sublease, is, is assignment. Uh, you could assign that lease to somebody else, and you usually get off the lease with an assignment, whereas a sublease you're still on the lease, but someone else is paying the rent. And I mentioned the exclusivity clause, but uh, I really want to emphasize that that's a protection clause as well. You don't want somebody moving in right next to you that does exactly the same thing that you do, and therefore you want to exclude uh, that possibility right there in your lease. So now you're really armed to enter into a lease with somebody. You know what a gross rent is and how to compare gross rents in the marketplace. You also know what a net rent is and to compare not only that net rent, but also the common area maintenance or expense portion of the rent. And hopefully uh, on tenant improvements, you can get the landlord to make the changes to that space that the landlord wants to lease to you badly enough and the changes aren't outrageous, uh, they should be able to pay it for you. So that is the uh, end of my webinar on leases. I'm sure that I uh, have left something out or you can think of something beyond that. And if so, please contact your local SCORE chapter. 
the email address is on your screen. Uh, contact me if you wish in the Twin Cities area, or drop us an email with your specific question. Uh, include, of course, that question and how we can get back to you. Uh, we'd be glad to help. Uh, that's really what we're here for. We also urge you to look online and see if any workshops or any other counseling services from SCORE can add to your body of knowledge, uh, not only on leases, but on anything else that will make your business a success. We wouldn't be uh, doing our job if we didn't throw in a couple of disclaimers and that really this content is for our clients only. Uh, I told you to uh, look to get a broker to help you and an attorney to help you. We don't endorse any specific vendors. And uh, these screens that uh, we've made up are for your use and our use only. So again, my name is Dick Allendorf. I'm a, a SCORE Minneapolis counselor. For these webinars, we have Veritas Marketing LLC as our technical advisor, and our funding sponsor is Spedco. So I thank you for your atten uh, attention today, and I hope you found this workshop to be of benefit. Thank you. Please stand by.